Hello and welcome back and that's right it's time for another before you buy and today we're looking at these this is from Acer store the locker store gen 2 series now this has been one that you guys have been demanding for quite a while and right now i'm in the process of reviewing all three of these i've already done the hardware review of going through the software and that should be with us very very soon so normally i would put the reviews of all of these out before i do a before you buy but because there are three of them and there's been so much demand for these i wanted to get the before you buy done first to cover the whole range and in this video i'm going to give you five reasons why Either one of the two, the four, and the six bay locker store gin two natties might be perfect for you. And I'll also give you five reasons why you might want to remain on the fence a little bit longer. Let's go. Okay, so first things first, the Gen 2 series has one thing that I've not seen any other brand provide in a desktop forum. That is that these devices, the 2, the 4, and the 6 bay, all arrive with an additional four M2 NVMe bays inside. So if you if you remove the chassis of any of these devices, and I'm focusing on the 2 bay simply because it turns this 2 bay into a 6 bay device, at the top there is four M2 NVMe bays all the way along there. You don't have to fully populate all of them. You can go ahead and just put one drive in if you choose. They are PCIe Gen 3 in their architecture, and you can put one, two, three, or four in a RAID 1, RAID 0, RAID 5 configuration if you choose. But also with the added benefit that you can utilize it in read-write caching, which is always good, but also as raw storage pools for those applications you want to run very, very fast or the storage areas that you want to access very, very fast indeed. And again, this is available on all three of them. We've got quite used to now a lot of NAS devices arriving on the scene with M2 NVMe bays inside. Indeed, the Gen 1 of this product series had a couple of M2 NVMe bays, but it's the fact that there are four of them inside this system to accompany the main storage in here. It's a tremendous benefit and something I think Acer Store could really stand to be a lot louder about, especially with the fact that you can use them as raw storage pools. Okay, so next up, let's talk about that Gen 2 moniker, because I think a lot of users that have never purchased an Acer Store NAS or have been out of the loop for the last few years on developments from this brand will not really understand the significance of the Gen 2 on there. The original Locker Store Gen 1, or just Locker Store series, uh, arrived in spring-summer 2020 and arrived with hardware that was comparable to a lot of other releases out there in the market at the time, but ramped up quite a few things, something we'll touch on later on. Now, the Gen 2 series arriving in 2022, unlike a lot of brands right now that have released new versions of their existing portfolio, what Acer Store have done is kind of scaled up the existing units there and just increase the cost by $60, uh, give or take, on each of the individual, individual two, four, and six bay tiers there. The result is a CPU that is a good couple of generations better than the previous one, arriving with the N5105. It also arrived with a faster memory at four gig at 2,933 megahertz that can be upgraded beyond the original eight gig maximum up to 16 gig, and that memory and that CPU combined, along with a further improvements across the rest of the hardware architecture. Indeed, really only one thing in terms of general hardware specification on the Gen 2 remains the same as its predecessor, and it was a bit that was already good that I'll touch on later. It has been souped up, and given the price difference, it's only around $50 to $60, depending on where you are in the world. And that's pretty much the same price increase as a lot of other devices in the market right now that have remained very, very unchanged between generations such as the DS920 into 923, which added some features, but didn't really soup up the majority of the base level features. And in some cases, I'm talking about that AMD Ryzen, certainly scaled things back as far as a lot of users are concerned. The architecture in the Gen 2 series has scaled up significantly across the entire device across most of that hardware available. And again, with such a small increase of price between the two of them, and the Gen 1 is still currently available, I do think that Gen 2 really is a great upgrade in terms of sustainability and improvements on what you're getting for your money. Next up, another little thing that I think Acer Store could stand to be a lot louder about is the fact that both the four and the six bay, that's right, there is a six bay, arrive with the option to add a 10 gigabit ethernet port. Acer Store provide a 10 GBE 
um, non-curve um, uh, PCIe, so low depth, low height card that goes in there with its own onboard heatsink, with its own onboard controller to allow you to add 10 GBE to the systems, which means not only have you got the option for all of that storage inside, not only have you got the option for those added M2 NVMEs, but you've also got the increased option to add 10 GBE on here. However, it is worth highlighting that the M2 NVMe board that's inside both of these that has those four M2 NVMe slots on board for you, all of that storage or caching or both, utilizes the same PCIe slot as this 10 GBE upgrade. So you are gonna to have to make a choice between the two if you're gonna go down the official card route or you can get combination cards that allow you to have both NVMe and 10 GBE on the same board. Although I've not had an opportunity to test compatibility of those cards on this product family as it stands. But still, if you're not interested in the M2 NVMEs, you can very quickly upgrade to 10 GBE on these two boxes here. This is not available, unfortunately, on that two bay, which is a real shame, but still 10 GBE is an upgrade on these. And just throwing it in there, something that wasn't even available on the Gen 1 is something certainly I think Asus Store could be a bit louder about. Now, this is something I did mention in my Locker Store Gen 1 reviews a couple of years ago, but two years later, it's even more true now than it was then. And that is, run, currently, if you're looking at buying a network attached storage device for the home or for business, there are certain features uh, available from, from the big two other brands, Synology and QNAP, that are locked to their platform if you want to try and choose between them. So, for example, if you want to have uh, take advantage of BTRFS, um, unfortunately, that is Synology only when you're trying to compare those two brands. But what if you want BTRFS, but you also want to use M2 NVMEs as raw storage? What if you want to have a KVM keyboard video mouse set up with an HDMI and stuff like that? Well, for that, QNAP have that and Synology doesn't. Where the locker store sits in is it has both. It, on these systems, it borrows things. And I say borrowed, I'm talking about the end user looking for features they want that are on respective platforms and melds them into this middle ground solution that provides them. So for example, you have access to BTRFS. You have access to the PCIe upgrades there. You have access to 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. You have access to a KVM um, um, a key, a keyboard video mouse set up there. You've got uh, improved USB ports there. You've got access to those M2 NVMe raw storage overall and with an lcd panel on the side you are getting hardware variables and kind of interesting developments in the world of network attached storage that are generally locked to individual brands all within one solution in between and again the lcd panel there is something that a lot of core old school server users like to have not only because that lcd panel gives you real-time information about IPs, about core temperatures, or frankly, when an alert's happening without, having, without you having to go via an app, authenticate your access, go into the system, find out what it is, and then turn the buzzer off. This allows you to manage and see those alerts and do things about it via that LCD. Hell, you can set these devices up from the ground up with just that panel. And of course, you're gonna utilize it with apps and desktop client tools afterwards. But if you are an IT installer, if you are someone that sets a lot of these up, the idea that you can plonk it down, stick the drives in, and then quickly set the device up using the LCD and the control panel on the front is going to be very, very handy. Finally, we should square in a little bit to a couple of those upgrades because I mentioned about the majority of features on this device in the Gen 2 are scaled up from that of the Gen 1. And the only thing that's really remained since its predecessor is the 2.5 GBE. But, you know, who cares? 2.5 GBE on the old or the new, you win either way. But two things that have been scaled up, and again, very subtly, and I don't know why Acer Store doesn't make more noise on these features, is one... The USB ports on this have been scaled up to USB 3.2 Gen 2. So 1,000 megabytes per second for those ports. So you can utilize Acer Store's USB expansion. You can take advantage of 1,000 megs M2 uh, external SSDs to get 1,000 meg USB storage access. Then you've got the network upgrades that work on these with Acer Store providing both a 2.5 to uh, 2.5 G to USB upgrade for about $20-$25 and between $40 and $50 a 5 gigabit Ethernet to USB device for this. So you can plug those in either on your client PC or Mac hardware or connect them directly into the NAS to add another network port. And remember with those four M2 NVMEs in there 
it's not going to be impossible to fully saturate a couple of 5GB connections and the 2.5s in a lag there. Another thing is that HDMI port there. They're one of the few NASs out there in the market right now, probably one of the only ones I can think of actually off the top of my head, who arrive with an HDMI 2.0B connection. Now, the difference between HDMI 2.0B and A and just 2.0 on its own, they all run 60K, um, uh, 4K at 60 frames per second. But this one takes advantage of shared bandwidth to improve the performance of SDR and HDR output there by having more fluidity in the bandwidth of those video channels there. So again, little things like that that have been scaled up on this system in the Gen 2 that a lot of users may have skipped over and not even realized were included are one of the reasons why I genuinely am quite excited about the Gen 2 series and probably one of the main reasons you guys have requested to see a lot more on the channel. However, this isn't going to be for everyone. There are things about the Locker Store Gen 2 series that may make you remain on the fence or look elsewhere. So let's go through those five reasons why you might want to remain on the fence just a little bit longer. Now, I mentioned this earlier on where the Locker Store Gen 2 series seems to give you the options of a number of different NAS brands right now in a single solution where a lot of those features are kind of locked into individual platforms. However, there is one feature that Acer Store have yet to include. Now, again, maybe at the time of recording they have included it, or much like some of the stuff I talked about, Acer Store has not been particularly loud about it. They are a smaller company than some of the other companies out there. But there is no fluid RAID system, to my knowledge. There is no way to put in mixed matched drives in terms of capacity and allow you to incorporate them into a more flexible RAID. Now, a lot of you might go, nah, you should not put different drives in a RAID configuration. And for the most part, that is true. It does lead to lowering performance and lowering of overall available capacity. However, if you are gradually expanding a system, if you have say a four bay that's got a couple of four TBs inside and a few years down the line, you find out eight and 10 and 12 TB drives have become more affordable. You may wish to bolster that with larger drives and a more fluid RAID system like Synology Hybrid RAID, like TerraMaster T-RAID, well, or Drobo Beyond RAID, Drobo, for those we've lost. But I think for most users, the appeal of a fluid RAID system, particularly at the scale of the two and the four bay, maybe slightly less on the six bay, is there and i'm kind of surprised that asus for all of its developments and it has really developed into adm in the last few years to improve things it's still not included in this package now this next one again is going to be um, affecting only a small niche group of users you're probably going to find this a lot in my five reasons to sit on the fence but because these systems are metal all the way around and the trays are metal as well the result is that this system is noisier in ambient operation, particularly with larger drives above 8 or 10 TB, where the construction of those drives is just a little bit more aggressive because of heli helium sealing and more platters being able to be made inside and 72 RPM, just more industrial drives there combined with hum and vibration of those drives in these big raid environments in a metal chassis in metal trays result in a little bit more ambient noise now earlier on in this video in the last four to five minutes for you guys you may have heard noise in the background there just little clicks and stuff going on there that is because the two bay i'm setting it up for the software portion of the review and i wanted to leave that noise in to give you some idea about a nas that's 2.2 meters away Away from me uh, behind a foam wall there I'm sure I, sorry I can't show it to you off shot of that system when it was booting up with two 10 TB drives inside so do bear in mind if you are going to be in close proximity with this system and you are using more industrial drives the metal chassis metal trays and general construction along with bigger drives is going to result in a little bit more of an ambient noise level when it's in operation again not the end of the world not going to affect everyone and if you are deploying one of these you know another room away in the cellar sorry the cellar the attic whatever you're going to be absolutely fine but do just bear that in mind 
Now these next two points are gonna be more about Acer Store software platform because you may have heard me say a nice thing earlier on about their platform ADM and it has developed considerably over the last few years. Um, I think the first time I ever reviewed ADM, it was ADM version, I think maybe ADM 3, maybe even older than that. And the first time I reviewed it, my two biggest criticisms were, one, that there were too, too, too many third-party apps inside there. And secondly, that the first-party application and experience did not feel anywhere near as fully featured as other brands out there. Now, fast forward to 2022 and ADM as it stands right now. And things have improved drastically, but one app that just has not seen the front end and uh, user experience developments that it should in 2022 is that surveillance center application. Their surveillance NVR application, CCTV, whatever you want to call it, it's functional. It does what it says it will do. It supports a lot of cameras. You've got camera licenses included. You've got the graphical user interface there. You will have to use the client application. It has to be said it's virtually, um, you know, this brick wall when you're trying to use it in a web browser. So you will have to use the client applications on your desktop or mobile device. But still, nonetheless, it it just doesn't feel as polished. It feels a little dated. It doesn't feel smooth. It feels a little bit clunky. It doesn't have a lot of supported AI services that are out there right now that some brands are talking about. Again, this there are things on their platform that are good, but the surveillance platform, despite the KVM setup, and I did a whole video about this, I think at the end of 2022 or maybe 2021, where I went through all of the different surveillance stuff and using AI Secure, the mobile app, the desktop client, and HDMI set up there. And again, do check that out. I'll link to it in the description. But the surveillance application for me is still a little bit lackluster and just a little bit underwhelming compared to a lot of the ones that are out there. And carrying on with ADM there, it has to be said that although the general fluidity, user interface, um, user-friendly nature, and just things being where they are on ADM feels better with an improved Linux kernel in the background, definitely feels more responsive, and definitely feels a lot more colorful, fluid, and responsive, and more native and local with lower latency when using it, ADM still lacks a lot of those killer app so i've already kind of put the boot in unfortunately on that surveillance application but when you look at a lot of other app uh, a lot of brands out there and again of course i'm going to look at synology and qnap who are significantly bigger than acer store so it's kind of understandable that they would have a lot of these tools at their disposal because of you know the amount of available cha-ching that they can throw at the software but still nonetheless if you are buying a nas for its first party tools as well it doesn't really have things like a um, hybrid mounting cloud system there. It has synchronization tools for object cloud storage and traditional third-party domestic cloud that you can kind of connect to it, but not the same as bolted on localized appearing storage where your client applications can interact with those as if they are localized. The same goes with something like, you know, virtual JBOD where you can utilize storage space on your um, Acer store to provide it as raid enabled blob storage there are ways and means to make the storage available but by nowhere near as um, native feeling as it is with the likes of virtual jbod same thing goes with the first party um, office range of applications there or first party chat or multimedia tools that are comparable to the likes of plex they do have their own tools for some things but when it comes to anything that gets a little bit more advanced than standard, um, kind of standard tools or expected tools, after that, Acer Store has a tendency to really embrace third-party tools. So it's embrace of a virtual box for virtualization with lots of those different plugins is there. They have an office suite tool that you can plug in there. There are supported third-party tools in their app center that work very well within the Acer Store platform but they're still third-party tools. And I know there are some people, when they're buying a network attached storage device, they're kind of buying into an ecosystem. They want that storage, those apps, everything to work within the bubble. And I mentioned earlier on about um, AI-supported services. And to date, they don't seem to have any AI photo recognition tools um, currently available. And that's something we're seeing increasingly available on most other NAS platforms. The ADM platform is fluid, is smooth, and is significantly better than it's ever been. But it does lack a lot of those AAA applications a lot of you look lot, look for. If you're only looking for the standard class music, video, files, that kind of stuff, they have their own looks good, sound good, um, streams good tools. They're great. But 
Once you want to go a couple of steps above that, because of the Acer Store, when you buy it and what you're paying seems to be geared a little bit more towards the hardware than the software, that's what you will find. A little bit of a glass ceiling on those apps. Maybe things will change in the next year or so. We can put a big old X through this point. But for now, that's how things stand with ADM for me. And this last point needs to be addressed because I'm sure a number of you that are unfamiliar with the Acer Store platform and started Googling when you were looking them up, no doubt noticed this on page one, two, or three. And that is that they're what they were targeted by a ransomware attack very early in 2022, the Deadbolt ransomware group who have attacked a lot of other NAS platforms. It was, you know, Acer Store were not alone in this in terms of people setting up these devices, not doing their updates, opening up ports willy-nilly, not having uh, VPNs and stuff like that in place. There is the whole debate about the onus of security, how much has the brand got to commit and provide for you and how much you, the end user, should be expected to have or do. But still, nonetheless, I think it would be remiss not to highlight that they were targeted at the start of 2022. Then. Now, in that time, they looked into uh, recovery tools there. They worked on, uh, again, the photo rec method and worked with a lot of end users, uh, publishing guides and recommendations on how people could either avoid it or mitigate things as much as they could, as well as making recommendations within ADM when you are setting the device up and changed a lot of the defaults, the kind of hard rules of setting the device up on the back end. And you will notice that when setting ADM up. So they have clearly you know, moderated and uh, learned from a lot of that stuff that happened during the deadbolt. But I think it would be very, very remiss for me to not at least touch on that they were targeted. A lot of users will understand the risk, understand that software and hardware network appliances are always going to have this in the back of their mind as something that can happen with any device in terms of security. But still, if you are going to utilize one of these and take advantage of their own remote access um, software that gets built in for the easy connect and stuff like that, then you need to bear that in mind. And I think some users who still read up about ransomware attacks on private servers, because remember, third party cloud is not immune either, will already have heard about this. So I do think it's worth touching in. But this has been my before you buy the um, uh, Acer Store, Locker Store, two, th uh, 2, 4, and 6, Gen 2. Again, we have full reviews coming on all three of these devices as well as comparisons against the very latest releases from other brands right now at the end of 2022. So do stay tuned for that. Hopefully the reviews and the comparisons are already done uh, over on the blog on NAS Compare. So do head into the description and have a little, little look down there for what you can find, what we published thus far, and what we're planning in the future. I can tell you right now that one of these devices is definitely in my best analysis of the year in terms of storage and the rest of the best of the years are going to be coming out in december where we were looking at everything two bay four bay plex vm surveillance uh, photo editing video editing you name it the best of are coming but apart from that thank you so much for watching click like if you've enjoyed the video always helps click subscribe if you want to learn more as we cover this and many many other solutions in 2022 and 2023 use the free advice section over on nas compares and the free community forum over on ask nas compares if you do need assistance from the nas community me eddie and others and finally if this video has helped you choose an asus door nas and you were thinking of going to Amazon anyway, if those two things apply to you, then do use the links in the description. It won't cost you anything extra. It takes you to Amazon. And anything you buy, a kickback, a little percentage, ends up coming back to NAS Compares that allows us to keep doing what we do. That's up to you. Again, if you want to use it, great. If not, otherwise, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.